Today we're working on finding zeros of various polynomials by factoring and possibly quadratic formula if needed. So I'm going to do three of the examples from practice 7D. But the first thing I want to tell you about is this little number right here. This is called the degree of the polynomial. It tells me what type of polynomial. If this is a little 2, then I have a quadratic. If it's a little three, then I have a cubic. But you say this one has a little three, but it's not the biggest one. The degree is the biggest exponent. The degree also tells us how many roots the function has. Roots, zeros, those give us our x-intercepts. Unless they are imaginary, then the graph does not have x-intercepts. So when you finish each time, you can check your work. Do I have the number of answers that I need? Because this tells me I'm going to end up with five answers. The first step is to always look for a GCF. Now there's not a number that goes into 5, 42, and 16, but x goes into all of these. There is an x on each of these terms. So take out an x first, 5x to the fourth minus 42 x squared plus 16. Now you may notice this is a 4, this is a 2. 2 is half of 4, and there's no x over here. This is called quadratic form. And we can factor it very similar to a quadratic with any of the forms, any of the methods that we used before. So I'm going to use double cross. Don't forget that everything is being multiplied by x, so you'll multiply that in the front later. In fact, we'll just write this. And this is an equation, so we will need to end up solving it. Factoring it is not enough. We have to end up solving it afterward. So two numbers, two things that multiply to give me 5x to the power of 4. Well, I need to split the x's evenly because this is half of this. So x squared and x squared, and of course, one of those will have a 5 on it. I got five on it. Over here, we'll put two factors of 16. I would say like two and eight. And they are either both positive to get a positive 16, or they're both negative. So I look over at this sign, and it says negative. That means both of these numbers will be negative. Now we're going to check to make sure that 5x squared minus 2 and x squared minus 8 are really what go into these parentheses. 5x squared, so we're going to multiply across this diagonal line, 5x squared times negative 8 is negative 40x squared. Now whatever the sum of these two numbers ends up as, it has to be negative 42x squared or we didn't do it right, x squared times 2 negative 2x squared. Yay! So the top row will be my first parentheses and the bottom row will be my second parentheses. So 5x squared minus 2 and x squared minus 8. I'm not done. First, can I factor these any further? Are these difference of perfect squares? No, 8's not a perfect square and this has a 5 in front. And 2 is not a perfect square. Okay, so now we will use the zero product property to solve. If something times something times something equals zero, then each of those things can be zero. x equals zero. 5x squared minus 2 equals zero. And x squared minus 8 equals zero. So x equals zero. That's one answer. So then we'll add 2 on both sides here. 5x squared equals 2. Before we square root, we need to get the x by itself, so divide by 5. 5 over 5 is 1. x squared is equal to 2 over 5. Square root both sides. x is plus or minus. I'm going to split this root to be square root 2 over square root 5 because I want to rationalize the denominator multiply by square root 5 over square root 5 
and you get x is equal to plus or minus root 2 times root 5 is root 10, root 5 times root 5 is 5, and this is how many answers? Positive root 10 over 5 and negative root 10 over 5. That's two answers. So right now we have one answer, two answers, and let's see if this one gives us two. Add it on both sides, then we'll square root x is equal to plus or minus, oh, we can actually simplify this radical because this perfect square of 4 goes into it two times, so x must be equal to plus or minus, what is the square root of 4? That's 2 times root 2. This is also two answers. It's positive 2 root 2 and it's negative 2 root 2, okay? Two different answers. So did you get all five roots? 1, 2, 3, four, five. Awesome. The very first step is to always look for a GCF. There's definitely not a GCF here because there's no number in front and there's no X with this. So I see that it is a binomial. I'm going to look at some things. Difference of perfect squares. Okay. Is it a difference of two perfect squares? X to the power of six. And 64. Well, you may say, okay, 64, I know that's a perfect square. x to the power of 6, I, I don't know. x to the power of 6, can you square root that evenly? Well, remember that a square root is simply a fractional exponent. So you can actually write this as x to the 6 to the power of 1 half. Square root is 1 half, cube root is 1 third, fourth root is 1 fourth, etc. So if I were to square root x to the 6th, I would get x to the, and then when you have a power times a power, you multiply. 6 times 1 half is 6 halves, x cubed. So because this simplified to be an integer, this is not a fraction anymore, then x to the power of 6 truly is a perfect square because it has a square root. So we will begin by saying, okay, the square root of this term goes in the front, the square root of this term goes at the end. One is plus and one is minus. Okay, now I have two binomials and they have a little three in them. Well, that's not going to be difference of perfect squares. Again, this chart only does not cover cubes because it's only for algebra one. So if we have the sum or difference of two perfect cubes, then we need to factor them accordingly. Is x cubed a perfect cube? Yeah. Is 8 a perfect cube? Also, yes. The cube root of 8 is 2. To factor these perfect cubes, the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 8 is 2. Drop the sign. This needs to be multiplied by a trinomial by which the signs are minus and then plus. They do not change. They're always plus minus plus or minus plus plus. Now the very first term in the trinomial is the very first binomial term squared. The last term in the trinomial is the last binomial term squared. And the middle term is each of the terms in the binomial multiplied by each other. Ignore the sign. Instead of writing 2 squared, I can actually write 4. And I've completed the factoring. Yes, I know you want to factor this further. It's impossible. Now I need to factor this one. The cube root is x, the cube root is 2, and you drop the minus. The only thing that changes about this one, because the numbers are all the same, is the signs. And there's always 1 minus and 2 plus x squared, 2x, and 4. This is all equal to 0. For these little ones, I can use the zero product property. x plus 2 equals 0, so x is equal to negative 2. There is one answer. For this one, x minus 2 equals 0, add 2 on both sides, x equals positive 2. There is another answer. 
Ooh, I gotta come up with six of them. Because these are not factorable anymore, but they should still give us answers, we need to use completing the square or quadratic formula. I think it's easier to make mistakes when you use quadratic formula, but people tend to be a little bit more familiar with it, so that's what we'll do. In order to use the quadratic formula, it needs to be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, which because of the zero product property, this whole thing does end up equaling zero. And then to find each x value, you take the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You think you're going to get away with me not singing it? Oh, the opposite of b plus or minus plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The opposite of b plus or minus plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. A is the coefficient of the squared term, which is 1. B is negative 2. And C is the constant, which is 4. The opposite of B. So if it's negative 2, we take positive 2. Plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2 times A. 2 plus or minus... This is 4 minus 4 times 1 times 4 is 16 over 2. Ooh, can we just cross off these twos? No! No, 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 no. Because we got this plus or minus in between. Okay, if it was multiplication, then yes. But no. 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 16 is negative 12. Hey, I think we can actually simplify that radical. First of all, there's a negative underneath, which there should not be. So we rewrite the square root of a negative as just square root negative 1. So this is just negative 1 times 12. But there's also another perfect, there's a perfect square that goes into 12, and that's 4. Square root of 4 times square root negative 1, that's square root negative 4, so we're not quite done. So this could be written as square root 4 times square root negative 1 times square root 3. The reason why we did 4 and 3 is because 4 is a perfect square. If you do 6 and 2, you didn't help yourself at all because you can't square root 6 or 2. So this had to be a perfect square. And a negative should never be left under the root. Anytime you have a negative under a square root, it turns into an i in front of the square root, being multiplied by the square root. x equals 2 plus or minus, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of negative 1 is i, the imaginary number, the square root of 3, and that's all over 2. Hey, I actually have a 2 in all three terms. Now you can cross off those 2's, and I'm going to actually factor it out. So 2 times, divide this term by 2 is just 1, plus or minus, divide this term by 2 and you get i root 3 all over 2. 2 over 2 is 1, so your answer for x is equal to 1 plus or minus i root 3. Remember, this is two answers. There's an answer that's 1 plus i root 3, and then there's also another answer that's 1 minus I root 3. When I do quadratic formula for this one, I notice that uh, the opposite of b is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 over 2 times 1. Negative 2 squared is the same as 2 squared. So literally the only thing that's different between the two of these is you have a positive 2 in the front and here you have a negative 2 in the front. So what we would end up getting is simply 
this expression except the negative version. Negative 1 plus or minus i root 3. And you can check that by going through the process. This is two answers. This is two answers. This is one, this is one. And that's a total of six. Yay! 33 should also have a total of six answers. The first thing I notice, well, I always wanna look for a GCF, but there's no number attached to this X and there's no X attached to this number at the end. So automatically, not gonna have a GCF. Then I notice that it's four terms. If it's four terms, we're gonna factor by grouping. Group the first two terms, group the second two terms, and factor them individually. So what's in common between these two terms? Well, x to the fourth. That would be multiplied by x squared plus four. Why would it be multiplied by x squared? Because x to the fourth times x squared, when you have the same base that you're multiplying, you add the exponents, four plus two is six. Now, keep this negative factored out. Nine goes into both of these terms. x squared plus four. Don't forget that once you've factored out a negative, that'll change this sign. Now I notice that I have two, what I call two terms. You have a product and a product. So two products. But in each of the products, I have a quantity x squared plus four that is in common, which means I can factor it out. Factoring it out means writing it once and then dividing it from each term where it existed at first. So if I were to divide this by the quantity x squared plus four, I would be left with the x to the fourth. And if I were to divide this by x squared plus four, I would be left with a negative nine. x squared plus 4. It's not perfect squares. Is it sum of cubes? No, because this is a square. So this one we can go straight to zero product property because it's done being factored. Subtract 4 on both sides. x squared equals negative 4 square root both sides. x equals plus or minus square root negative 4. I can rewrite this as plus or minus root negative one times root four. I know the square root of four, it's two. I know the square root of negative one, it's i, the imaginary number. So there are two answers right there. When you have a number that's outside of the root, we usually write it in front of the i. When you have an i, we usually write it in front of the root, and the root is written at the end. So that's two answers, yay! but I got four more to go. I notice there are two terms, so do I have difference of squares? Well, x to the power of four. Can you square root x to the power of four? Well, that's just x to the fourth to the power of one half. That's just x to the four halves. <gasps> x squared, yes you can x squared and x squared, and then you'll take a square root of nine. Oh yeah, of course you needed to check if this was a perfect square. That's plus and minus. And remember these are equal to zero, so we can use the zero product property. x squared plus three equals zero, and x squared minus three equals zero. Subtract three, so x squared is equal to negative three. I'm running out of room here square root both sides, x equals the square root of negative three. So plus or minus the square root of negative three. That can just be written. Okay, three you cannot square root, but the negative should be an i in the front. So turn that into an i, and then now it's square root positive three, no longer negative under the root. And there's an x squared minus three up here. I'm gonna add three on both sides and end up getting x squared equals three. It got too messy. 
square root both sides and you get x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. So this is two answers here, two answers here, and two answers here. Yay! So that's all six answers.